Do you have difficulty achieving your goals in your supply chain or maybe in whatever role that you're working in? Well, we all do at times. Hi, this is Rob O'Byrne from Logistics Bureau and you might be wondering why I'm standing here next to the stadium for the uh, Parramatta Eels. I have to say I'm not a rugby league supporter, so apologies to the Eels. But you know, success in achieving your goals in business and whatever role that you're working in is rather like working uh, in a sports team. Some teams are really successful, some aren't, some have great coaches, uh, and, and some just don't seem to make it. And um, unfortunately, the Parramatta Eels, whose home stadium this is, I noticed finished 12th out of 16 in the ladder this year. So what makes the difference? Why do some businesses and organisations actually seem to achieve far more? Now, I'm in a lucky position that I talk to lots and lots of businesses every day of the week. And, you know, some of the businesses I work with just seem to get things done. They have an enormous number of projects on and they achieve great goals, but others struggle. They just seem to spin their wheels all the time. So I thought I'd just share some tips with you today to help you achieve your goals in the supply chain. But we won't stand here on the hill next to the Parramatta Eels. We'll take a quick walk down near the river and I'll share some of those tips. Okay, so let me share some of these tips with you that may help you achieve your own goals uh, in your supply chain. And uh, it started raining, so we're here at the uh, Parramatta Park Cafe. Give the cafe a plug. Lovely place to come for a walk on a Sunday, and they make great coffee. So, we're talking about why do some organisations seem to achieve their supply chain goals a lot easier than others. And, and the analogy was also with sports teams. I just want to talk for a moment, uh, and I'm going to refer to some notes here uh, from a really great presentation uh, that I saw recently, uh, which encapsulates this really, really well. And one of the things the presenter was talking about was BHAGs, big, hairy, audacious goals. And I think we've seen that in a lot of businesses, I'm sure you have, where these goals are put up on the notice board and, and things just don't seem to get achieved. Uh, and there was this lovely definition of what a BHAG is. A BHAG engages people, it reaches out and grabs them in the gut. It's tangible, energising, highly focused, and people get it right away. It doesn't need any further explanation. And there's a wonderful example of a fantastic BHAG, and it was President Kennedy. And you'll all remember this speech. This nation shall commit itself to achieving the goal before the decade is out. Notice the time frame of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. And that was a fantastic, big, hairy, audacious goal that galvanised the nation behind the whole um, lunar program, getting someone on the moon. So how does, how does all of this fit with your situation and in your business? Well, some of the things that can go wrong when you set these really big, hairy, audacious goals is that people don't actually believe that it's achievable. And one of the things that causes that is that we get set in paradigms. We're used to things being difficult, we're used to things being done in a certain way, and we don't believe that actually you know, the world can change or our performance can lift significantly. Uh, and I, I had a couple of recent examples of that myself, which um, I won't share on this video, but I might put a, a link to it, where I undertook something that I didn't think was actually gonna be physically possible, and I did. And it was all about breaking down paradigms. And I, saw a fantastic example of this with one of our consulting clients recently and they were a, an automotive parts distributor. They're one of the leaders in Australia and in fact around the world. And the challenge that they had was that the picking productivity in their warehouse was not very good. Uh, and so they started off doing a benchmarking exercise with us and I think their productivity was at about 15 units an hour, 15 lines per hour in their picking. And they said, oh, what would the industry standard be? And so we did some benchmarking, and it was about 40. So you can imagine, excuse me, I'll have a sip of this awesome coffee. You can imagine uh, the reaction within the warehouse when they're saying, look, your current productivity is 15, the benchmarks are 40, uh, you know, we ought to try and reach that goal. I mean, people just didn't believe it. And, and that's the problem. You've got to try and shift people's paradigms. So what they did is they went through a process of engaging people in the warehouse on this improvement program and they set the bar a little bit lower. They said, let's try and achieve 30 lines per hour over the next 12 months. And there was a really strong engagement program going on 
uh, where targets were measured very carefully and bit by bit people were engaged in the process and coming up with suggestions and slowly the productivity got up. And guess what? They hit 30 lines per hour way before the 12 months were up. And in fact, they hit the 40 within 12 months and now they're just about to hit 50, 18 months into the program. So after two years, not only had this company increased their line picking rates, lines per hour, from 15 up to 50, but just, just listen for a moment about some of the really tangible benefits that they got. I've jotted some down here. Their increase in productivity was 217%. Just think about that for a moment. What does that translate to? Uh, they had a delivery in full on time, a DIFOC measurement of 99.72%. So they had this increase in productivity plus a lift in service levels, which their customers loved. And you know what happens when service levels improve? Customers buy more. And they had a profit increase of over 40% just through that one initiative. Just through getting people galvanized behind uh, a big, hairy, audacious goal leading them through the process and all the engagement that involved with it. So, you know, how was all of that possible? A goal that was put to the team initially, thought to be impossible, and they actually kicked it out of the park. That's the sort of thing that fascinates me, and it's the sort of thing that I would love to share with you in a lot more depth, how you can actually use frameworks like that to achieve great things in your own organization, in your own departments. Uh, and in fact, the presentation that I was taking some notes from was one of our most popular presentations given at Supply Chain School. And it was given by Stephen Thacker. And I persuaded Stephen Thacker to share that presentation at a breakfast that we've got coming up very, very soon. And he's gonna go through the case study that I mentioned with the automotive parts company. And he's gonna go through some other case studies and give you that framework for how you can achieve great things within your own organisations and achieve your goals. So if you want to come along to that breakfast, uh, we're holding it in Sydney and Melbourne. It's also online if, you can't, if you're not in Sydney and Melbourne. All you need to do is click on the link below and all the details are there and you can register. And the breakfast is coming up in about three weeks. I think it is in November, 16th, 17th or 17th, 18th, something like that. Just click the link below and we'll look forward to seeing you there. You haven't clicked the link yet. Um, are, are you wondering who else might be there? Well, if you haven't been to one of our breakfasts yet, um, you'll find there's all kinds of people just like you wanting to improve their business. We get general managers, we, we get supply chain managers, we get warehouse supervisors, all kinds of levels. So don't worry uh, about who else is there. You're going to fit in really well. So if you want to come and join us, just click the link below the video. You still haven't clicked the link. Um, maybe you're wondering what the breakfast is going to be like. <laughs> well, the coffee is as good as this. Uh, and at these rather intimate breakfasts, they're, they're not uh, a huge group. Uh, we like to have a, a good sort of bacon and egg or... Uh, what, what's the thing that we did recently? Um, eggs Benedict. Eggs Benedict is always very popular. So, so don't eat before you come. So it's a, a really nice breakfast, networking with some great people and some great information. So if you don't want to miss out and you want to come along to the breakfast, just click on the link below. You still haven't clicked the link. Okay. Um, maybe you're wondering about the time commitment. Uh, we start at 7.30 on the dot, we, we have breakfast uh, and then we do a, a talk and a discussion during breakfast and we'll have you on your way by 9 o'clock. So you don't really even have to lose any work time. So uh, really, really great uh, session, uh, but you do need to click on the link to, to reserve your seat. So just click on the link below and we look forward to seeing you there. You still haven't clicked the link. Um, maybe you think we're going to try and sell you something. Nope. <laughs> I guarantee you, and I promise you, we're not going to try and sell you something. Uh, we just want to enjoy your company over breakfast and share some great information with you uh, so that you can actually achieve much better things in your organisation. So if you want to join us, just click the, the link below. All the details are there and you can register. You still haven't clicked the link. Well, 
if you don't click the link and register, you won't be coming along and you won't be sharing all of this great information. But I thank you for your time, for watching this video, uh, and all the success in achieving the goals in your own organisation. Uh, and I really do look forward to seeing you at the breakfast. But you just got to click the link below. <laughs> and we'll see you there. Bye for now.